Hi guys, this is Umair back with another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about very important JavaScript concept and that is called execution context and JavaScript hoisting. Actually, this concept needs to understand by every JavaScript developer. It will actually explain you guys how the JavaScript read by browser, what's going on at the back. If you are writing JavaScript code, it will help you to debug your code in a more efficient way. And also it will let you guys understand how you can uh, successfully write a quality JavaScript code. It can include React or Angular as well. And it will also help you guys if you want to build a library for JavaScript framework. These are pretty advanced topics, but uh, these concepts will help you. So I'm going to create a few files over here so first file i'm going to create index.html and in here i'm just going to include a javascript file uh, this is only required to run the javascript code so that's why i'm just creating so i'm just going to create uh, html and inside it i'm just going to create a head tag and after that i'm just going to create a body tag inside the body tag i need to include a script okay so I need to create a JavaScript file. So I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to name it script.js. Okay. So now uh, I'm going to add that file, which is script in a source. So it is a script.js. All right. So I have saved these two files. There is nothing inside the JavaScript. So whenever we include or run any JavaScript file, still it, there is something happens at the back, even though we haven't written anything over here. Okay. Uh, you might remember if you're writing JavaScript code, you should remember that we can have a window keyword why is it showing uh, the window dot and we can find a location and these are all coming from the javascript so uh, we're gonna see that what kind of variable or the scope it gets created even though we don't write anything so let me just run this script in my browser okay so i have opened up this particular file and run this html code in my browser on the right side on same screen there is nothing obviously we haven't added anything in our html but uh, if i inspect this page and uh, let me just bring it down all right so now uh, if i simply go to the console and uh, i can see there would be a lot of files so what it gets created if i write this hit enter you will see that it will show me something. So anything that is the part of this particular empty web page, uh, it we can actually access it uh, in the console of that browser window. So if I write this, you can see it was existing in that particular page. So what it contains, it contains all the functions and the methods, just like alert, uh, blur, uh, windows, actually variable windows and this variable actually same so if i simply write window as well like window hit enter so you will see that it will return the same kinds of functions and variable so or this is the whole big object that contains the variables as well as the function reference that we can use so it contains the history focus and all these things so we know that it has been created by default by the browser okay so let's go to the script now and uh, i'm going to create a variable inside it so for a hello okay i'm going to save this file and i'm going to rerun it okay so now i'm gonna press uh, just write this and i'm just going to open up it you can see that it has printed a colon hello so this has been added as a part of this variable okay if i just uh, print windows uh, it will also be shown up over here so we have seen that anything that we will create in our javascript code will be added in the scope of browser okay so uh, how it gets created if i simply write a function let's write uh 
hello this is the name of this function i'm going to save this file reload it and i'm just going to write this hit enter and if i see this object uh you will you might see a hello function over here i need to find it over here so just like this variable this hello function should be added as a part of this particular variable that is called this or windows okay so everything that we create is it's called global execution global object okay so anything that we are going to create inside it like if i create another function second inside the parent function or i create a variable inside the child function uh, that will be added in the execution context of that particular function but these functions hello and the variable a will be added as a part of global object so i will explain to you later more that what do i mean by execution uh, context and a global object okay so i just want to explain you guys how compiler read understand and execute over javascript code okay so i have created this variable a i'm going to create another variable b okay so let me just save this file and i'm going to refresh this page now i would like to print the values of a and b so if i write a there is a hello and if i write b it is undefined so what does it mean by undefined actually when our code executes the compiler that is called the execution context it actually go through all the code that you have written before it it actually show you the output so what do i mean by it it actually read the first line it actually read the second line so when the first line was uh, created it actually allocated a memory in a ram and it allocated its value and now if we have written b it means that it has been added in the memory but compiler itself added its value undefined undefined is you can say it is a special value uh, that we can use if we want to use it in the if like b equals to undefined we can do such conditions okay you can also assign undefined value to the variable b but this is a bad practice don't do it because uh, when you write the code and you are uh, assign undefined value to the variable b uh, you won't be able to debug later on that whether you assigned this value or it was uh, get it, it got undefined uh, because of some kind of error or a bad code okay so don't do it it will uh, make you confused while debugging the code okay so now let's say that i have defined this variable a i can log a okay and let's define let's log b and after that i'm going to define b okay so i'm going to save this file and refresh this page you can see the hello undefined it means that if it has it was executing the whole code line by line at this particular point at the line number four this b doesn't exist so undefined shows that this particular variable ex was existing in the memory but its value was undefined but according to our code we see that uh, at this particular line this line wasn't executed but this is the wrong concept actually the execution context and the compiler you can call read or analyze the whole code before logging your uh, values so uh, even when we printed b this line was already analyzed by the compiler and its a value which is undefined was allocated in the memory so when the whole code was analyzed this particular a uh, log function uh, checked out that this particular variable exists in the memory and that's why 
its value is undefined so we have seen that uh, this particular line was analyzed and its allocation got exists in the memory and that's why it is printing undefined if i just remove b you will see it will throw an error because nowhere in our code we are defining b it doesn't exist so let me just refresh you can see the b is not defined so you might get confused that not defined and undefined are a kind of same no undefined as i said is a special value and b is not defined it means that b was never existed in the memory or the ram okay so uh, you must take care while writing the code that uh, you need to define a particular variable before you actually write its code so if i define b before login refresh it is same as defining var b after console log b if we write it above or below this line it is same because we have not defined its value okay so now let's come to the function okay so i'm going to define a function and i'm going to name it hello and uh, i'm just going to log a message hello function was called okay and uh, i'm just going to define its call function which is hello and now i'm going to create a variable b and i'm going to assign its value b okay and let me save the file and let me rerun the code and here you can see it printed undefined the first two lines are obvious and third line you might get confused that why is it undefined if the code was analyzed and its value was uh, actually uh, uh, added in the memory then why it printed undefined so here i explain why function behaves differently if if we write this function after hello call it will still print the same okay but uh, this particular value uh, whenever we log any particular value or print any particular value before it gets analyzed uh, it gets initialized or declared then its value will always be undefined no matter if we have assigned its value or not even if we write this it will still print undefined so the initialization process of the variable behaves differently than the function call if we write this function uh, after this hello call it will still all the uh, logic within the function uh, will be executed perfectly but if we log a variable or use the variable for some kind of calculations uh, then even if b was uh, analyzed by the compiler and its value uh, or a variable got exists in the memory um, it still got uh, undefined because initialization doesn't handled by the analyzation process okay initialization actually happens when we actually compile or execute our code properly after analyzation so i hope that you have got the idea so this process of uh, uh, allocating the memory space and initialization process after the analyzation during the execution process and behaving differently in case of variables and in case of functions this is called javascript hoisting okay and uh, you need to able to understand these concepts while writing this code it will really help you how you can actually debug your code okay so now what i'm going to do now i'm going to explain you uh, what are the different kinds of variables we have we can define variables using a var keyword as well as the let keyword okay so let me just refresh it you can see uh, even the function was analyzed after its call uh, 
it behaves differently it works perfectly if, even if we write above or below it okay so we can also define a variable using let keyword so let b equals to b okay and after that uh, we can simply log the value of b so let me just refresh you can see it has been printed okay so let me just remove these two lines and i'm going to paste it over here okay so now let me refresh so now you can see as usual uh, it printed b so now let me just uh, write it below okay so now uh, you might be thinking that uh, it will print undefined because this line is getting uh, uh, analyzed and uh, it uh, its location has been allocated in the memory so its value by default added would be undefined even though we have defined uh, its value or initialized it with b so let me just refresh now it's not undefined it is an error that can't access b before initialization so let data type works differently than the var data type so the recommended practice for let is to use it within a blocks whether it's within the function within a loop or within a function body okay or if condition this is the body curly braces so it make sure you define these variables before you can actually use it so a javascript by default doesn't allow you uh, to use that particular variable even if it is defined or initialized and it will throw an error if it is defined differently if i simply change it to var and refresh it is undefined because javascript uh, works differently with var and let okay so last thing i want to explain you guys uh, different stack of execution context okay how the stack gets generated okay and also the scope of the variables this is a global scope this function exists globally and uh, we are logging it globally okay and i'm going to create another function hello to and uh, i'm going to just create a variable inside it my var and i'm going to give it a value 2 and i'm going to create the same variable my var equals to 5 okay and uh, now i'm just going to create another variable my var outside and i'm going to give it a value 7 and let me just log seven now i'm going to call hello now i'm going to call hello two okay let me just log these values my var and log it as well okay so just refresh this page now uh, you might be thinking that uh, we have defined these values variables three times okay so i just want to explain you that uh, uh, these variables have different scopes when we define this particular variable its value is only accessible within this particular block of code within the curly braces of this function and same for hello too and when we define this particular variable outside it then uh, its value in the scope of this particular variable exists uh, outside these functions as well as inside these functions okay so now if i simply remove you can see that its value 7 which was printed then this value then this value it's obvious now i'm just going to comment this line okay i'm going to save it let me refresh now you can see that even if we are within this function and we are calling this function this log is using the variable name which was added outside this function 
okay so uh, if we rewrite uh, the same variable name within a function then it will be overridden uh, with uh, with a new value or a same value we can define its new memory will be allocated so how compiler understand if the variable names are same how it will actually analyze or look at the memory blocks that uh, these uh, variables are created and how it actually analyze the scope of that variable whether it's a local scope within a function or it is a global scope in spite of having the same variable name so what it how it actually works is uh, the whole analyzation process creates a global execution context uh, you can call it uh, you can imagine it as a block uh, at the bottom of this page okay now uh, whenever this functions got called there was new block added above that first block okay and whenever this third function got called the third block got added above that function it's a stack of blocks three stacks of blocks and all the variables and the functions that we intend to create within a particular functions gets associated for that particular block so uh, this variable was added within the block uh, of within the first block that was added uh, right below the first block and this variable that we created was associated with the second execution context you can call it an execution context and this variable was added in at the top block uh, and associated with its execution context whenever the execution context works javascript actually is a synchronous programming language means it is single threaded it executes javascript line by line okay so whenever a compiler is within this function it it means it is within the execution context of this particular function which is the block so it doesn't know uh, it doesn't move outside the execution context to see whether this variable exists in a memory or not or it doesn't check the other blocks of execution context that whether this variable exists or not okay and if i define the same variable like 10 then uh, you can see that it is overridden it is same as we define this variable outside this function or within the function if it had to throw an error over here it should have thrown an error uh, because we wrote the same variable uh, outside this function okay so this is how javascript work it won't work in other languages like java c sharp it won't work like it okay and even though it won't work even if we define the same name of variable outside any particular function it won't even work so uh, this is how the compiler read this particular code okay and it becomes a stack okay we can also call the hello to function from within this function i'm just going to comment this line and it's going to work same you can see it printed seven seven and ten okay it works same so same kind of execution context or the stack worked okay so when uh, this executed it called this function it came over here and uh, the new block or execution context uh, was created and it is using the variable were added in the global execution context so if we are using this particular variable now it doesn't exist in this particular block or execution context if it doesn't exist then it will go outside this particular execution context and see the global execution context whether this variable existed or not okay so uh, the last thing i want to show you guys is uh, again the undefined thing and uh, uh, you can call it like uh, let's say i'll come down and uh, i just want to let you know that uh, 
how we can use the undefined in the form of checks so uh, if we have a variable variable c and it is undefined okay now if i just write c equals to undefined then log c is undefined okay and else we can log c is not undefined okay so let's save it let me refresh i'm just going to comment all the code written above so the reason i'm writing this code is to explain you what is the purpose of uh, type of okay now if i run this code you will see that uh, the type of c uh, i have used this undefined but it is showing me that the type of c is not is equals to undefined okay so let me just uh, log the type of undefined before it so undefined what is the type of undefined okay so the type of undefined is undefined it is a special value whose type is undefined <laughs> okay so uh, where we can use the type of one thing is we can simply write undefined or a variable name it will show me uh, type of c which is undefined and uh, if i simply give it a value and it will show me a number okay so before we initialized a value uh, its value was undefined because we don't have int character or string in javascript but we can get the type of variable from this particular uh, type okay so the last thing is uh, you will learn a lot if you play the with the code more and more by yourself so if i write double quotes then you will see that c is not undefined okay uh, it is not undefined let me just remove the initialization it is showing me that c is undefined okay so while when we actually we were actually writing the undefined without double quotes uh, it it means that uh, uh, the data type or a value for this particular variable is undefined okay but while checking with this operator uh, we can't actually use this type of variable okay this keyword can't be used if we are using the double course because it means that this its type is string and this type the type of it is undefined so undefined is not is equals to the undefined which is enclosed within the double course so now what do you think it will print it should print c is not undefined this uh, message is like confusing but don't look at it or just uh, consider or focus on the block of code okay so now you can see c is not undefined because undefined is not is equals to uh, this undefined which is within the double quotes because it's a string okay so uh, that's pretty much it uh, I just wanted to explain you guys uh, how the execution context and the stack works within the JavaScript. Uh, and there are different ways we can analyze in terms of operators, uh, in terms of objects. Uh, we have different kinds of terminologies. Uh, uh, the compiler for the JavaScript actually run our code in different way at the back. I'll be creating more videos to explain you guys if we create if statements loops uh, comparison operators booleans uh, primitive types uh, and the precedence of uh, any particular equation uh, we need to understand 
if we want to become a good javascript developer so that's pretty much it for this video if you want more knowledge in depth about the javascript uh, especially if you want to be a uh, as good as you want to create a javascript library or a framework uh, make sure to subscribe my channel hit the like button and hit the bell icon and if you have any question just comment below this video